Let's go ahead and talk about Japan lays out penalties on crypto exchanges for non-compliance with Russian Russia sanctions. It's so hard to fight the fight, guys. How are we going to fight the good fight here? Crypto exchanges making unauthorized payments to sanctioned individuals could be fined as much as 1 million yen, 8,500 US dollars, with executives facing up to three years in prison. Japan's government and financial regulator have laid out the penalties crypto exchanges could face if they fail to comply with sanctions imposed on Russia following its invasion of Ukraine. The Financial Services Agency and Ministry of Finance announced the penalties in a joint statement on Monday, according to a report by Forecast. Crypto exchanges making unauthorized payments to sanctioned individuals could be fined as much as 1 million yen, which is 8,500 US dollars, with executives facing up to three years in prison. The financial regulator also requires exchanges to report any suspected instances of such transfers. Man, oh man, there have been concerns that crypto could be used as a means of evading sanctions placed on Russia and some individuals. There is yet to be any clear sign that this is happening. Uh, Coindesk always likes to say that, that their defense is that there isn't cl any clear sign that this is actually happening. And I get it, but you can't just, you can't argue this way. So it's the same argument of like, basically, criminals use cryptocurrency and then basically somebody arguing with them would be like, well, not, not all people using cryptocurrency are criminals or not, you know, I don't see any evidence of that or whatever it may be. The fact of the matter is that's a completely moot point. We should be arguing for the liberation of the individual and their ability to transact without the interference of governments and so on. And it's end of story there because the individual rights matter and that's really where we need to draw the line. If we want to have arguments over essentially the sanctions, then we can do that in the SWIFT space or whatever else. From my perspective, obviously I don't think that cryptocurrency should adhere to any sanctions period because it completely defeats the purpose of cryptocurrency. Uh, that being said, this one's a little weird because it's the government imposing it and it is imposing it on centralized exchanges. So we can go way back in history. We could go all the way back to when I first started the YouTube channel and I would talk about the dangers of centralized exchanges. Look, man, we said that they were sketchy. We said the centralized exchanges could lead to terrible things. And case in point, this is the type of things that centralized exchanges lead to. Unfortunately, it's a little hard because you have to once again participate in those societies that you live in. So we kind of go around this whole circular argument thing. But does that mean that we stop fighting the fight? Does that mean we stop talking about it? Does that mean we stop voting for the, the fundamentals and voting the people in that we want? No, it doesn't mean that we stop fighting for what we want. It just means that it's a difficult thing to participate in right now and adhere to the fundamentals. It's a difficult thing to do. What you can do, though, in general, is pull everything off of centralized exchanges, at least anything substantial, and only move to centralized exchanges when needed to basically liquidate, and then start utilizing decentralized exchange options that are not part of things like Binance, Coinbase, Crypto.com, or whatever, and make sure that you are supporting those projects, adding liquidity to these decentralized exchanges as well, and making them function well uh, because you know they need that liquidity to essentially function, and make sure that we move that direction. You also have, obviously, just a plethora of different ones. Uh, the Komodo platform is a great one as well. There's lots of decentralized options that you can use for trading and, and, and that sort of thing. You don't need to be holding NFTs in Coinbase or Crypto.com. You can hold NFTs in self-custody and start telling people these things because it's important. And the only way that you stop this sort of stuff from affecting the crypto industry, the only way you stop this sort of stuff 
is by basically detaching yourself from exchanges that are centralized and tied to the government and tied to government regulations. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.